One man is being victimized by our own government. One man whom they fear, yet who millions love. One man who is willing to take the poison arrows of lawfare. One man whose voice has been taken away by a corrupt judge operating in a corrupt system. One man who has been ridiculed and insulted. One man who refused to back down. One man who refused to back down. One man who refused to back down. One man who stands between us and them. One man that wants to see America protected again. One man who wants to see America prosper again. One man who understands that a man is a man and a woman is a woman. One man who understands and protects the blessing of life. One man who wants to restore American exceptionalism. One man who once again wants to make America that shining city on a hill for all to see. A place where all the people of the world glowingly set their eyes upon. America. One man who unashamedly wants to make America great again. That one man is Donald Trump. is Fanfare with Barry Cunningham. Well, you have Donald Trump who's saying that Israel should target Iran's nuclear infrastructure. But when Kamala Harris was asked about it on this uh, 60 Minute special that's going to air tonight, they released a little clip of it. She couldn't say that she was an ally of Benjamin Netanyahu's. What was your response to that? Well, I think that it just drives home again. Kamala Harris's entire approach to this this crisis has been to, with the one hand, say, well, maybe we kind of support Israel, and then with the other hand, actually pursue policies that prolongs the war. If you actually want peace in the region, if you want to preserve civilian life, and most importantly, if you want to enable Israel to build the kind of long-term security for itself in the region, uh, then you have to support policies that will get the war over as quickly as possible on things like holding back precision guided weapons that would both destroy the Hamas bad guys, but also minimize civilian casualties. Kamala Harris has sort of been at the forefront of threatening to stab our allies in the back. And because of it, we have a war that has gone on for much longer than it should have. Frankly, if the Israelis weren't able to do what they do best, I think this thing would have been over months ago, and we could have been on the pathway to rebuilding a, a Abraham Accords, a Middle Eastern peace process that unites Israel with some of its Arab neighbors to provide a counterbalance in the region to Iran. What we have now is, unfortunately, Iran is empowered. They're richer than they've ever been before. And they are emboldened to attack not just Israel, but a lot of really important American assets in the region, American economic interests. And unfortunately, it's all been emboldened and all been encouraged by Kamala Harris's weak leadership. Yes. Yes.
Welcome, everybody, on a Monday evening in a different kind of Trump-based event. We've all seen his rallies. We've seen many of his, his speeches over the last few years, per se. Tonight's going to be a little bit different. You know, I took the day off mostly to do some administrative work. Just wanted to, to lay low with everything going on between what's going on up in North Carolina and with this hurricane coming down here. And then with everybody, you know, having to deal with what's been going on with a potential another terror attack with the people from, you know, Hamas. What, who knows what they were going to do on today, the anniversary of what basically was the worst day death-wise in Israeli history and is very comparable to a number of 9-11s when you consider the size of the country versus what happened. So I, I expect Trump to come out tonight quite somber. Um, he's going to obviously address the Jewish community. He's going to speak to them in regards to what America can do for them. He's probably going to address what America hasn't done for them. He's probably going to draw some comparison between what he would do as president, which they already know, and what Kamala Harris would do if, God forbid, she became president. So I, I expect them to be somber. I expect them to come out and really identify the absolute failures of this current administration, which there are many. But in, and but I think he'll keep it to just Israel tonight. I don't think we're going to see a lot more beyond that. And so we're getting ready for him. It looks, though, usually I come on a half hour before that time. But at this point, it looks like he may not be hitting the stage or wherever this is. That is, this is going to be at Doral here in Miami, his golf club down here. Um, and looks like they bumped it to 6.30. So I had all everything timed out for a 6 o'clock appearance. And now we've got to burn an hour. So let me go someplace else right now. Let me talk about the hurricane coming here. We've talked about the hurricane in North Carolina, and I will continue to talk about the hurricane in North Carolina because there are some really weird things happening. I, I don't want to jump ahead because I'm going to make another video about what's happening in the last day or so. I don't know if you've seen on Twitter some of the stuff that's been going on with helicopters and, and basically doing a rotor wash, which is to cause havoc on the ground below. Uh, it, it's some really, really nasty crazy stuff but tonight tomorrow and the day after so between now and Wednesday I'd like you to take some of those prayers that you had for North Carolina and, and place some of those prayers on the people of South West Florida because they're about to get absolutely walloped the storm doesn't make any sense there has never been a storm this powerful there's never been a storm that just erupted from the west coast of the Gulf of Mexico and it accelerated, intensified the way this storm has. And so now, as of about 10 minutes ago, this storm getting ready to hit the west coast of Florida looks like it's going to be at about 180 miles an hour right now. Now, I understand, and I don't mean to diminish anything. But I, but I want to give you guys, especially you who don't live in Florida, a little, a little bit of information. Because the media, oh God, it's another catastrophe. And, and it may well be for some people. Don't get me wrong. It, it may indeed be that way for some people. But, but I have to show you something to give you some real insight into what's going on. This is basically, and this was uh, put up at 435 so just a little while ago this is the actual path of the storm as you can see here um, it's 160 it's now they, they're saying that it's basically 180 miles an hour that it's going to be coming across but that's out here in the open water let me see if I can make this a little bit smaller okay and what you see there and that red line that's coming across your screen that is the projected path of the storm. The stuff in white is what we call down here the cone. The cone of probability. If it wobbles one way or another, where could it head? For us, luckily, 
if you see Miami and, and you look at where Miami is on that that uh, screen basically right about here this is where Miami is we're about 60 miles a little bit maybe 65 miles north of Miami and we sit right on that eastern seaboard so you can see as of today we are outside the cone of probability for those of us here in Florida so Palm Beach Broward Dade we're outside the the, the, hev the most heavily populate, populated area of South Florida is basically outside that cone. But that cone is, the way they have it, is directly a direct hit over Tampa, which is a e extremely populated area. And then, you know, who knows where it waffles once it goes inside, because once it goes inside, that it could hit Disney. There's all kinds of things that it could do once it gets up in there. But I, what I want you to pay attention to is what happens when the storm actually hits. Okay, I was able to freeze it at the right spot. This storm could be a three or four when it hits Tampa or the Tampa area or if it wobbles and it hits Fort Myers. It could be that strong. And if you look right now, it says Wednesday at 8 p.m., they're projecting it as of now. It could get bigger, but as of now, it would hit Tampa at about 125 miles an hour. So what does that mean? It means a tremendous amount of surge from the Gulf of Mexico. It means, you know, basically the low-lying areas in Tampa by the bridge, by 75. They may get a severe surge, a lot of water washed over. And then once it crosses the land in there, and you can see it's going to go across that entire swath out there by Daytona. Um, a lot of rural rural areas through there. New Smyrna Beach, um, Orange, all through there. Is a lot of trees. NASCAR, um, what do you call it, the Daytona 500 Speedway, Daytona Speedway is out there. And of course, between those, those two... Two red dots between, let me stop it, between here in Tampa and over here in Daytona, you're looking at just a, a very, once again like North Carolina, very rural type area. If it hits Orlando, then, it, then you could have another populated area. But it's going to be very rural. Lots of trees, a lot of, a lot of trailer parks. Um, between Tampa and Daytona, there's all kind of uh, Ocala. There's all kinds of just rural areas in there. Popka that that will be damaged. They're showing it. What are they showing there? Um, a one. It's three. I'm trying to see what they're trying. Basically turning into a, a one by the time it hits Daytona. Could this be as bad as what you're seeing in North Carolina? I'm not going to discount this at all. I'm not going to say it's not going to be bad once it hits Tampa and then moves on because there's all kinds. But but I can tell you this, I doubt, I really doubt it will have the complete devastation that we've seen up in the mountains. Number one, the building codes down here are much different. We have so many hurricanes, they revamped the building, building codes. Every property you see there that's within like 30 or 40 years old is concrete. There are no, well, there may be, but there are very few wood houses, wood structures of any kind between the swath where that storm is going to head. That alone, just to let you know, and I'm again, I'm not trying to discount it. The, the, the building codes alone down here in South Florida make it unlikely that it's going to be as catastrophic as it was up in the mountains. The other thing is we're, we're very, our base, our land, we don't have clay and soil and, you know, the things they have up there. This is a very sand based area. So it's going to take on a bunch of water. And the water will look bad on television, but it will recede very quickly because it gets absorbed. One of the problems you have up in that area, it's gator country. And if the water rises and that, those gators get to come out of those, those tributaries where they're in, it can get really dangerous in that regard. Also, you've got a lot 
of cattle. Hopefully they've done something again with the hurricane here. Even right now, it's Monday at 545. So at Monday at 545, this thing is way over by Cancun. Let me just show that again. You see that? This is, this is a, a little bit different than what you're seeing up north. Tuesday, tomorrow morning, it's still over here by Cancun. So you live in central Florida. You live anywhere inside of that cone right now. You're, you're bustling up, getting the hell out of Dodge if you can. I understand there's some problems with gas because people didn't do it earlier. <laughs> I don't know why they didn't get their gas earlier. But other than that, you know it's coming. There's no surprise. It's not just going to show up like it did in Western North Carolina. There was no, they didn't have any planning up. They were just like, here's all the water. Here's the rivers. Good luck. Here, you've got time. You absolutely have time. There's no reason if you if you have to stay, make sure you're not on the you know the outer edge of anything. But everybody else from basically Tampa all the way to Daytona Beach and south to Fort Myers, you've got time. Go do something. Even down here in South Florida, our our homeowners association sent out an email and said, hey, listen, the lake may overflow. Don't drive through it blah, 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 make sure you got no projectiles on the porch because even though we're not in it, that spin that happens, you know, that when it, that the curl, boom, that tail, it could, could hit us with some, you know, backside wind. We're not going to, we're not going to really get hit. And then it also, as it goes through Tampa and Daytona, it could spawn um, basically um, tornadoes as well. So other than that, that's why we're different than what's going on up there. But the people on the coast, they just got hit up, you know, by the bend up there. Hopefully it doesn't turn and go left and hit some of those people in the big bend area. But as it's coming across Tampa, it shouldn't be as bad as what happened in North Carolina. And the other problem that you have in Tampa, there's parts of Tampa that are, how can I say this? Mm, say it nicely. Quite urban. These are people who don't have maybe the wherewithal to get out. And that's something that at this point, I'm sure the state is getting in there and getting into these projects and getting into these schools and like, get on the bus, get out of here. Because you don't want to see anything like Katrina happening. So in terms of the evacuation, which a lot of people have and are continuing to evacuate, but it won't be... Uh, I'm not a weatherman, but I, I just have lived here long enough to know that uh, it shouldn't be as bad as what happened up there. Um, <laughs> I'll keep the Wisconsin snow and freezing weather in the winter. No, I mean, uh, it, it's <laughs> like, again, you get used to it. We know what a hurricane's going to be like. Cat one, stay at home. Cat two, stay at home. Cat three, Depending on whether we're getting a direct hit or not, will determine whether or not we're going anywhere. Cat 3 that is scheduled to go to Brevard or Melbourne, yeah, we're not really, I'm not going anywhere. Cat 3, if it's dead on, yeah, we're probably going to get out. Probably. Maybe Robin would leave and I would stay. I don't know. Cat 4, pack the dog, let's go, we're out. <laughs> Shut her up, <laughs> make sure everything's done, and let's get the hell out of Dodge. So, um... You know, man, very keep covering. I watch you instead of the fake news. Oh, they're going to tell you. They're, they're going to try and show you every possible angle of every possible thing that could possibly go wrong. And, I mean, you've seen the memes and everything about Florida man. Flor Florida man is a little bit different than, you know, other areas. Same way Asheville is a little bit different than, you know, things up there. If you see looting, they're probably going to stop it pretty quick. One way or the other, if you know what I mean, and I think you do. So, uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, yeah, so understand when they're saying it is a Cat 5 right now. Again, I just want to show you. It's a Cat It's a cat 5 out here. Wait, way out here. Make sure you understand what these people are saying when they're jumping on the news and raising all kinds. Oh my God, it's 180 miles an hour. It's a Cat 5. A Cat 5 out here. Can you see it down here? It's it's not, it's not oh you can't. This is where it's a cat five. Alright? Just understand. 
you're talking the distance it's it's even west of cancun as a cat five and then it's expected to go to uh, cancun and basically still be a a cat five but then it drops because you know weather changes and it's a cat four out here so don't let cat five out here scare anybody that's that's way out in the water Cancun, you're not taking to get hit. You're going to get sideswiped. So you just have to be careful in terms of that sideswipe because those those feeder bands can get quite nasty. Then it drops to a four. What you want to look for, and they'll never tell you this, is you want to make sure it doesn't go back to a five. You don't want it to get into these warm waters and, and basically accelerate into a five or intensify into a five. You want to see this begin to drop as it's coming across. And then you're hoping it hits as a three. As a three, it's, it's, it's going to push a ton of water in. You're going to get a great surge, but people shouldn't be quoting and say, oh, it's 180 miles an hour. Oh, my God. No, you, you, you can see on, on your screen right there. By the time it hits Tampa, it, with this projection, and anything could happen, and I don't want to sound facetious, but at that point it would only be 125. That's that's a little bit different. It's a lot different than 180. But now you understand what I'm saying. I hope. So, and I'm I'm not trying to do anything crazy. Uh, Barry, what was the name of the man you mentioned last night to? Go look up. Which man? The man's name you mentioned to go look up. Not sure which man. I mentioned a lot of people. Uh, but Barry, any cat three or bigger, you'll never get out. Been there, done that. I've sat there and watched it go past my sliding glass doors before cat three. So, <laughs> you, you, you're not going to get out during it. But now if it's a cat three, people are leaving. But I don't know what you mean by you'll never get out. Never get out of what? Are you are you familiar, or any of you familiar with the Miami Dade building codes in South Florida? So if you if you understand uh, the Miami Dade building codes, and that's pretty much a code for hurricanes. Um, let me see if I can find it. Okay, so Miami Dade. Uh, Let's see here. Uh, this is. Let, let me just show you guys this. Since we're waiting for Trump to show up, and I just want some people to to understand what we're, what we're talking about. Um, the Miami Dade building codes. I can show you. Which which link can I pull up here? It's going to be better. All right, this one. All right. So you're so you're a little bit edified. So people aren't freaking you out. The Miami-Dade County Building Code for Hurricanes includes requirements for wind-resistant design, high-impact windows, and roof retrofits. And it says the high-impact windows, the first 30 feet of a high-rise building, must have windows that can withstand a 9-pound 2x4 traveling at 50 feet per second. And then down here it tells you, Miami-Dade and Broward counties are in high-velocity hurricane zones with different wind loads for different risk categories of building. Risk category 1, 165. Risk category 2, 175. So I guess what I'm just trying to show you is that the stuff down here is, is built to withstand. After Andrew came through, a lot of this stuff was built up so if we, we don't see that. That's what we don't want to see. And so they redid the entire building code to make it sure, okay, and this is Florida's statewide building code adopted in 2002, has made a real difference. So I'm not making this up. I'm just telling you, you know, having been in real estate, what things are. And here are the, you know, the risk areas and how they determine it. Um, let's see, the minimum, uh, where is it? Okay, the reddish crossed areas show where the 2010 revision of the code removed parts of the state from the 140 mile or top gust that are used to define wind-borne wind debris zone. And this is what, what a house could look like that has now been built up versus one. I, I mean, I don't want to get too far into weeds. I'm just telling you. Like I've said before, one and two, don't even don't even miss sleep. Three, the wife may leave and I may hang out to make sure nothing's wrong. Four, everybody gets out. Everybody. And those are on direct hits. 
So right now, when you when you're seeing stuff like this, and and, and there's there's really no everybody within this cone of uncertainty right there. Those people need to just make sure everything's okay. Now now the problem is, which I've been telling you guys for months, is prep. You see, the people down in Fort Myers, you may miss the brunt of the storm, and the people in Daytona may miss the brunt of the storm. But if power goes out and you don't have any power for four or five days because the poles get wasted, that's where the problem starts coming in. If you got no power, the water, <laughs> nobody drinks Florida water anyway. I can't remember the last time I drank tap water in Florida. <laughs> Think about that. We do not remember the last time we drank tap water in Florida. So we're always watching, drinking water out of, out of our uh, you know, five-gallon buck, jackets, buckets, or, or bottled water. Nobody that I know drinks Florida tap water. Just doesn't happen. So the big thing is electricity. And if I can't stream tomorrow, then you know that's what happened. You know, the storm came through, or maybe Wednesday. And if Barry can't stream, it's because the power's out. Doesn't mean the house is gone. So that's just just trying to give you guys a little bit of information as to how this stuff works down here. If you if you think you can handle the truth, hit that like button. <laughs> uh, see, this is the kind of stuff that you know. I'm looking at what Louise put here. This is the kind of stuff that I, I'm going to talk about on Twitter. I can't talk about that here. They don't want me talking about it, so I'm not going to talk about it. Yeah, do not. Somebody said, don't drink Florida tap water. Uh, Wisconsin has some good water. Yeah, I'm, I, I bet you. Probably, you probably, <laughs> tap water in Florida is gross. Yeah, no, we don't drink it. So we're not going to go run out of water because we don't drink it anyway. Yeah, you, you take a shower with it. But other than that, you're not, you're not really going to. I mean, you've got water. What side is the dirty side on? The dirty side is usually, okay, so if you're if you're looking at a storm that's kind of on TV, look, or I mean on screen, it looks different. Basically, it's the back half. So if you could imagine, here, let me pull it back up again and show you. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Uh, okay, so this side of a hurricane is the bad side. So as it's whipping around, it does this. The, 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 the back end side is the side that can get you, that can, that can whip you. It's like, a, it's like an alligator tail. It just, it's, it's just coming and it's whipping you. It's whipping you. You see, because the front side is going like this, but it's that back side that can, that can give you quite the wallop, quite the wallop. I hate those. I hate those things. Um, let's see here. No, <laughs> no money. Um, have plenty of body wipes if no water. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, breaking news, Vice President Harris marks October 7 attacks with tree planting. Yeah, I heard that. I didn't want to even show it. I, I, I don't want to hit her so hard, but everything she did on 60 Minutes, Tim Waltz going on Fox News, it, it, it's just unbelievable how out of touch this entire campaign of hers is i mean she's seriously circling the bowl at this point it's really bad um water will uh water flood will come come in on the north side of the storm north northeast side because that's where that that tail side comes in and hits uh, the reason pe reason people can't describe these uh, storms and can't survive these storms is common sense. I I will I will have to agree with you. I mean, my wife, as I've mentioned to you, is a big prepper. If the power went out here, I'd be pissed off because I couldn't do my videos. But other than that, we're gonna be fine. It, it's people who are gonna lose the water damage is is probably the worst. Water and wind, and and. We saw what happened to the people in North Carolina. That was water damage. You know, you can get away with wind. You're going to lose your power. You may you may lose, you know, a roof tile. But there are people on, on the coast over there in Tampa. You know, some of these houses should be up on stilts by now because they've been leveled before. Um, a lot of the hotels and little mom and pop motels may get wiped out. Um, things like that. But most of that time, it's because of the water surge that's going to come over uh, and hurt them. 
Uh, I drink water from a filter from my fridge in Hollywood, Florida. But trust me, I have bottled water back up three pro propane tanks for my grill. Yep. Florida man. You you are Florida man or Florida woman. I can't tell by your uh, your avatar. It looks like Florida woman. You got the propane. You got the you got the you, you're gonna eat. So you know a lot of people. And trust me, I love the prayers. I love that you're wishing people well. Let's focus on that Tampa area. They they're gonna get wallop one way or the other. Um, and uh, we'll see that. Um, quit scaring each other. The fear is high enough. I'm not sure who's um, talking about fear at this point <laughs> it's called reality if you can't face the reality of a hurricane staring you down it's not fear because fear in my mind here's what fear does fear doesn't allow you to make real decisions fear paralyzes you people in tampa and all along, along the west coast of florida what they need to be doing right now is making decisions actually it may be too late they may have wasted time but you, you have time to make your decisions. And it's funny, for some reason, I saw everyone fleeing Tampa, and they were all going north. And I'm wondering why there wasn't a big, you know, big rush to come south. That was kind of interesting. Uh, Barry, the Call Me Daddy interview was just a disgusting new low and shows how bad she's losing. You go, you go on what's basically... <laughs> I guess we can just call it a porn site where they're talking about, you know, different things involving, you know, bedroom stuff. And she thinks that's the market she wants to go after. Good luck with that. Absolutely. Good luck with that. Um, Benny Johnson evacuated. Yes, he did. And I think Benny, um, one of the reasons why he had to evacuate, he was under mandatory evacuation. So that means he may be on a barrier island or close to it. So when, when we lived in Fort Lauderdale, we were not on the barrier island, meaning on the other side of the intercoastal, but we were on the, the western side of the intercoastal, which is west of the barrier island, as they call it. So he may live, and his studio may be on that side of the barrier island, and then they come up with the evacuations, and they have mandatory. And so if you're under a mandatory evacuation, you, you don't have a choice. you got to get out. you got to get out. Um Oh, wow. My brother is directly in uh, Milton's path. Uh, he has a typical stubborn Floridian. I worry for him. He's the only family I have left. I moved to Tennessee to get away from that crap. All right, so if your brother lives in A, a concrete house, B, if he has hurricane um, impact windows and doors, C, if he's not directly on the ocean, or rather the Gulf, Maybe he feels he's he's put himself in such a such a way that he could withstand whatever's coming. And what I mean by that, put himself in such a way, does he have a generator? I mean, a lot of people down here, it's not like up North Carolina. A lot of people down here have generators. And I don't mean like a little solar power. I mean like a generator that's installed and runs your house, the entire house. It, it costs about 25 grand to install that. And if you install one of those generators, the power goes off, the generator kicks on, it's like nothing ever happened. So it all depends on where he lives and, and what, how he's prepared. I, I know some, some people who lived on A1A. There's a guy who's got basically a castle on A1A. It's probably six feet off the ground. And then the entire home, the facade of it, is made of concrete re poured brick. So it's not just a concrete block, it's poured block. And then he's got hurricane impact windows and doors. I mean, basically, if you've never seen like a, a demo of a hurricane impact windows or doors, you could literally shoot at it. So, you know, something flying into the house and all this stuff, uh, he could literally open his blinds and watch a hurricane come. And he's going to be okay. Provided it's not a tidal wave, but if it's just a, you know, even a Cat 4, he could sit there and just pop some popcorn and watch a cat for hurricane come across i wouldn't want to be there but yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i have a big welding generator that <laughs> that runs my entire house Ooh, that's, that's nice that's nice yeah i'm in boca yeah i'm in southeast florida 
Um, somebody said something about Benny's evacuation. Uh, what good is a generator when houses, towns are gone in section of the country? I'm trying, yeah, yeah, I'm trying to kind of confuse by what you're saying. What good is a generator when houses and towns are gone in section of a country? I'm talking about Florida. I'm talking about Florida building codes. I'm talking about Florida hurricanes. The people down here, especially here in South Florida, who have lived through hurricanes, who have rebuilt through hurricanes, who understand how your house has to be fortified. Last time I checked, there are no towns that got obliterated in South Florida. They're all still here. When Andrew came through, which was probably the worst hurricane that hit Florida, maybe one of the worst that ever hit the country, it obliterated a certain area because they weren't at that time at these building codes. Even if Andrew came through South Florida again, I do not think it could wreak the kind of damage that Andrew did. So when you're saying what good is it when houses and towns are gone, it doesn't happen. I'm, I'm, I'm just being honest with you. I've, I've seen, one of, I forget which one it was, Wilma, might have been Wilma, Wilma might have been a four uh, that came through, and Robin and I took off and we went to Orlando, and we stayed in Orlando right by Disney for a couple of days, and we came back, and the power was out, everything else was still here, we just had to wait for them to basically reconnect everything, took them, I think that was probably the worst, one. probably took five or six days to restring everything. But every time it happens, notice I said every time because it has happened many times, they get better and better and better in putting together the transformers and the, the wires and the poles and they dig underground. Like where we live right now, there are no poles. There is no power above ground. All the power is below ground. When we walk outside, you do not see a pole with any wires anywhere for the entire development. So if something were to happen and we would lose power, then I know that we lost a generator, so I'm not a generator, a transformer somewhere, which is a lot easier to replace. They probably have thousands of gen I mean transformers on trucks right now. And as soon as something might happen if a tr you know pole snaps and it goes down, they're going to have that done right away. So it's not a matter of houses and towns are gone down here. That ain't going to happen. I, I can absolutely tell you that ain't going to happen. Uh, Florida building codes continually strengthened since Andrew pulverized Miami. Yep. If they didn't, think about what you're saying. The other guy who said, you know, what good is it if the town is gone? If they didn't continue to basically improve on the building codes and make sure that everything is going to be here for the worst, there wouldn't be anybody living here. There wouldn't be anybody buying $10, $20 million homes because we're like, what? I can't go down there. That house might get blown away. But if you go on the east side and if you go near the water, you, you know, all you see is people building condos and houses. And I mean big-ass houses. I mean, you know, you get lost walking around in some of these houses. Never mind the gazillion-dollar boats that are parked in the water. So understand what you're going to see happen in Florida, even up there, is nothing like what happened in North Carolina. It's not even comparable. Um, you know, let me see what else here. Milton just dropped to 905, uh, what do you call that, millibars. So it's getting stronger. Um, let's see here. My neighborhood still has above ground lines, uh, but we are in a grid with a substation so we can get it back up pretty quick. So Bridget here, she's talking about a, a power substation because they, I don't, you know what, I've traveled a lot up the East Coast. I don't see that either. We've got all these substations. So they basically divided the areas into like boxes and so okay, this substation powers this area. This substation powers this area. Oh, if they go out, these people might still be on, so we'll just go over here and, and, and work on that. Not, I'm not trying to give you a geography lesson or something, but I'm, I'm saying because so many people have asked, if you're not seeing me tomorrow or you hear about the power being out in Florida, it's, it's going to come back relatively quickly. And most 
of the people not directly in the storm's path are going to be okay. Um, what else we got here? Uh, generators in the area that Helene destroyed uh, could charge cell phone. If he could build a light that runs off of 120, mm -hmm. things that you don't think about. Yeah, and our, her, our when I say generators, just, just so... Just so you know, we're not talking about these little small generators or the things you buy at Home Depot that you have to run cords out to. These are basically power stations that you put in your house. I mean, uh, I, I don't. It's funny because when I talk to people, they they don't uh, understand what these things look like. Let me, let me show you. Um, all right, so when you're looking at a generator, some people see this stuff. Hey, I, I can get this thing and I can go ahead and plug some lights in. Or here's a little solar powered one. But this is the kind of generator that I'm talking about. These generators, they, they do your entire damn house. I mean, if you you go to Generac and see and see what these things look like. I mean, that's a solo picture. Let, let, let me see if I can go to Generac's site and so you can actually... Okay, here's Generac. And... See? You... you let me find one. Where is it? That's what a Generac looks like. It, and it does your entire house. <laughs> you, Panama City up there in, in the panhandle. It, that's, that's something that you know that if your power goes out, you're going to have power right away. Instantly. It's huge. I mean, this is probably, I don't know, six or seven feet plus, and it's hardwired into your panel. So in, in, our, in our house here, we have um, solar panels on the roof, and our solar panels tie in directly to the panel in the garage. So if the power goes out here, the solar panels don't have enough power to power the entire house, but it'll, it, it'll power the refrigerator, it'll power the stove, it'll power the ceiling fans. You'll be able to watch television. I might even be able to get on the internet depending on how, how much we're drawing at that time. But it's, 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 it's solar. So between solar and people who've got generators, you're, you're going to be okay. I mean, seriously, it, it's, it's, I should do a walkthrough one day and show you what we got out there. But it's, it's, it's pretty good. But... It's not going to help these people in and around Tampa right now. So let's talk about that. I got a solar backup. Uh, uh, I know you're in Boca, but where are you? And okay, where am, where are we in the map of the hurricane? Okay, let me show that again. So just so you guys can see and understand what uh, what Florida looks like, many of you know. Um, this is Fort Myers, which is on the west coast. Key West is the very tip of Florida. Miami is on the east coast. And we're right about here. Based on this map, we're like right about here on the east coast. That's where that's where Boca is. Right right there. Like 65, 70 miles north of Miami. That's that sits right there. That's even that even might be too high. It might be like right there. And so, you know, pretty far away. Um, people are like, oh, the generator won't work if, uh, <laughs> if there's a flood. I can't convince you, bro. I, I, I just can't convince you that the flooding, I mean, I got a letter from our homeowners association today. And in the letter of the homeowners association, they're telling you what's happening with the gates. And people are like, what's a gate? Barry, what's a gate? Well, here's what a gate is. You've got, if you're looking at, uh, if I could zoom in on this map, which, which obviously I can't, you got the ocean out here. And then if you could look inside here, there's an intercoastal. And then all this, see that brown area in here? All that brown, dark, dark area? That entire dark area, <laughs> that's the Everglades. There ain't nothing out there but gators and fish and other stuff. So... All of these ponds and, and lakes down here in South Florida all have, if you guys were into plumbing, they all have out, out valves. And so if the lakes raise too high, they sit there and cr literally crank them open and let that water flow out to the Everglades. 
and it may be on the west side of town, it may be on the south side of town, their canal, their canal, even the intercoastal. The intercoastal gets too high, they open the gates, and it lets the water basically rush out to the intercoastal. Now you're going to see, and I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, you are going to see videos of flooding in Miami. It's going to happen. But they never tell you that flooding goes away in like 12 hours. And so people who know, hey, listen, the storm's coming, get your cars out because it's going to flood in these parts of Miami. It's, it's, you ever notice when you watch the news and they show you the floods from Miami, they never show you how it looks a couple days later. They'll show you the, you know, the, the storm a couple days later in other areas. Like, oh my God, look at the, look at the wrath of the storm and what it did to everybody. They don't go back and show you in Miami. Why? Because then next day people are driving up down the road like nothing happened. There's no landslide. There's no dirt. It's sand. I remember when, when one of the hurricanes came across A1A. And then within two days, they had the payloaders and the bulldozers was picking up the sand and tossing it back over. It's a different area down here. It's even different than what's going on in Tampa. Uh, okay. Mm. Yes, they are called floodgates. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> there should be a quick. <laughs> there should be a a, a required course uh, with all this information if you choose to move to Florida. Yeah, I. I and the only reason I know it. it it's funny you mention that. Having been involved in real estate so much, every question you guys are asking, trust me, I've heard from every out-of-state person who's ever bought a home here. <laughs> like, wait a second, man. I really like this house, but I heard about these hurricanes and alligators. And so the first thing you tell somebody is every body of water that you see anywhere, you're driving along, you see a canal, every single body of water, you have one thing you have to remember. Just assume there's alligators. You see people go, just assume. How do you think the rest of us live? We know if there's black water, don't go near it. That's it. It's that simple. We see people come in and they're tourists and they're walking their dogs by the by the, the, the lake. Hey, um, you might want to pull Fluffy back up on the leash right quick. You, unless you want him to be an hors d'oeuvre, get him up. You have to assume every body of water has an alligator or alligators. I, I told Ashley, I sent her the email from RHOA. Hey, we got a gator in Pond 2. All right. Hey, we got two of them over in Pond 4. Okay. Keep your pets away. As you're jogging, don't stop. There's, there's gators there. You just learn. You learn to live with it. You want to buy a house here? Understand you're coming into the gator's domain. They lived here a lot longer than we have. So that's number one. You have to teach people that. You're buying this house and you're buying it on a waterfront. Well, that's not really waterfront. That's like river or lakefront. You see this bank? So when you see smoothed out grass or smoothed out mud, you got a gator. You, you've seen pictures of people who walked out their front door. And there's a gator on the front lawn. You have to be prepared for that. That's one of the things I keep saying to people over and over. You have to be prepared. Every time I do one of these shows, when I walk out, the dog says, hey, I want to go outside. So what do I do? <laughs> I take the flashlight, the mag light with the big handle, and we walk outside. Why do I take the flashlight with the big handle? I don't know, in case there's a coyote out there. They tell us there aren't any. I haven't seen one. But I want to be prepared. If, if, if a coyote comes running up, pop him in the head. No, you can't have this. Secondly, if you want to buy a house in South Florida, make sure, make sure you, you, you're, the house you want to invest in has hurricane impact windows. Make sure you can get insurance that you can afford because the insurance is kind of high if you live anywhere, anywhere near an area where it might flood. So and so, it's not so much having to have a course. It's because I've been through the course. I've I've bought and sold real estate. I know I know when I go to buy something, and I look. I'm like, wait a minute, is this house made of wood? Yeah. See, ya. no interest, none. Why? Because that thing could eventually just fly away. Uh, let's see. Let's see what we got. 
I, I am starting to wonder if the USA is paying the price for cursing out Israel or throwing Israel under the bus. Now, I don't know, man. Something don't seem right. Something just doesn't seem right. I don't know what it is. I don't know why it's doing what it's doing. Um, I mean, we've all heard about the so-called October surprises. Something ain't right. I really... <laughs> I watched <laughs> Gilda, why are you telling people these secrets? I watched the gator fly eight feet out of the water to catch a dog. Dog got away. Well, that's good news. Good story. But I'm sure right now there's people reading what you wrote going, say what? <laughs> eight feet out the water. Yeah. They are some, they are some amazing animals. What they look like versus what they can do. Did you know a gator can probably outrun most humans? If it's in a straight line. You got to zig and zag with a gator. You run a straight line. It'll tire out. I mean, it's not a distance animal. But they're, they're very quick. Very quick. Um, <laughs> don't buy close to the water. <laughs> Think about what you just said. I, I, I want you to just go ahead and think what you just said. Don't buy close to the water. Do you realize that's why people come down here from other areas? Specifically to buy houses close to the water. Tom Brady. Giselle, his wife. Trump's daughter, Ivanka. Trump himself. You guys know where, oh, here, maybe you're not understanding this. Um, let's look up this piece of property. Um, let me just show you where this thing sits. You guys have heard, you, you, you guys have heard of this place called Mar-a-Lago, haven't you? Yeah, Mar-a-Lago. Well, what do, you, what, do you, what do you call all that? Oh, here's a better picture. Let me pull it up. Okay. There you go. There's, once that ad gets away, there's Trump's estate. You see it? You see Trump's estate right there? You see this blue stuff over here? That blue stuff is the Atlantic Ocean. The Atlantic Ocean sits here. Right here, if you can see my mouse, that's Ocean Boulevard. Right there. That's the one road in and one road out. This is where your president stays. And you got people saying, oh, man, <laughs> Florida, <laughs> you can't live in Florida. He lives right there. There's the ocean. It literally is 500 feet from his front door. And what you can't see is over here on the backside is the intercoastal. So all this land, and you can look up on Wikipedia. Actually, it says it right here. This was built in the 1920s. Here it is in 1928. How do you think that property's still standing there? If it was such a big deal to not, not to stay away from the water. Are you kidding me? Are, are you actually kidding me? You want to be next to these properties. These properties are, are, are basically brick poop houses. They ain't going nowhere. They ain't ever gone anywhere. And they've been there for 100 years. They are monstrosities that have every possible aspect of building codes and everything. When they did the renovations, all of it. There are, there are sky rise uh, condos on the beach in, you know, outside of North Miami. There's, there's big, big high rises in Fort Lauderdale. It's not the water, it's the preparation. It's what you need to do when you're looking to build and or acquire one of those properties. Um, <laughs> try to outrun a monitor lizard in a foot race. No, I don't even want to get near one of those suckers. Uh, are there places in Florida that don't flood? Sure. Yeah, there's places that don't flood. But there aren't pla many places that don't have the propensity to, to flood. I mean, if the weather does what it does, it, it could flood. But you have to make sure, again, that you're pre prepared for it. I lived in Fort Lauderdale, just to let you know. How long were we there? 
We were in Fort Lauderdale for 16, 17 years, had a slew, and I mean a slew of hurricanes. Not once did it flood. Not once. And I mean cat threes, cat fours, all of it. it, it what flooding? It doesn't do that. Now, on the West Coast, I'm not a Gulf expert, so I can't tell you because I know some of the, it's different over there. Here, we've got an intercoastal which acts as a break, if you, if, plus the berm. So if you're going to come up over the ocean and you're going to wash across A1A, you're going to, you're going to, the water's going to fall into the intercoastal. It's not going to just keep coming across. Now, there's neighborhoods that flood because the sewage systems, are, I mean, there's a part, uh, area of town called Oakland Park outside of Fort Lauderdale, around 36th Street, 38th Street. You already know. I, I'm going to tell you right now, if I went down there and took a picture, it's going to be flooded. Every time it rains like that, it's flooded. People still live there. Uh, Fort Lauderdale is my hometown. Way, way to go, man. So, you know, you know, Doc D. It's right there. Um, I have in-laws in Vero Beach, and they are staying put and not worried about it. No. I mean, Vero Beach is a relatively new town. And a lot of new construction. And, again, this is something a lot of people don't understand. Up in Asheville, I told you the story. My wife's father was born in the house that he lived in. That house has been there for forever. It's a wood house. Down here... What are the ages of the oldest homes? 60? 65? And they were built out of concrete. If I if I tap that wall right there, it's not going to go boop, boop, boop. It's going to go duck, duck, duck. Because I'm hitting a brick. An actual brick wall. A lot of people don't realize that. Because when you see homes getting built in other places, you see, you know, sticks. That's not what it is. All right, so it's 627. I see people rustling around. Um, they still haven't taken their seats yet, so we'll, we'll get back to that. Um, people are going to Jacksonville. Yeah, I live in Weston. So Weston's a very new, very nice area. Um, very, very new. I'm sure those houses there uh, uh, are, are all hurricane, hurricane impact. Um, I'm in Northport, Barrie. In a cement house, have nowhere to go. But I read, read out, wrote out Ian a couple of years ago and did fine. Yeah, it's the biggest problem we're going to have in the Tampa area. I, I can confidently say this is going to be the water surge. If they're calling for a 12 or 14 foot surge, you know, it's basically 12 or 14 feet of water rushing in. But, you know, most of the stuff in downtown Tampa and Tampa, they, they rebuilt those things. My um, my wife's my wife's mother moved to Florida from Milton, Massachusetts. It's coming to get her. Where, what part of Milton is she in? Uh, I mean, what part of uh, Florida is she in? Um, somebody says I'd eat gator meat. If you've never eaten gator meat, <laughs> and I'm going to say it because y'all know what I'm going to say next. It tastes like chicken. I mean, the first time I ever tasted it, I went and, you know, was adventurous and said, okay, let's, let me taste this. And we had gator bites, and it's made from the tail of an alligator, and it's white meat for the most part. Tastes good. Tastes, tastes, quite tasty. Um, moral of the story, no trailer parks in Florida. There are some trailer parks. Unfortunately, most of the trailer parks are in the area where the storm is headed. You know, it's a very rural area. My biggest concern, in addition to the people and the property, is the, is the livestock. A lot of people don't know. Florida's got one of the biggest cattle industries in the country. And so, you know, I, I hope, you know, most of these farmers know to get those things on, on a, uh, <laughs> get on a trailer. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> With a straight face, I can tell you, if any of them wa waited out into a, a lake down here because they saw a, a, a duck, or if they saw, you know, a, a goose or something out there floating around, have mercy on them. That's, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> uh, 
Gator, uh, over 55 trailer park off of West Shore. West Shore Drive in Tampa, I believe, is what she's talking about. Um, <laughs> Frog Legs asked what he's talking about. <laughs> All right, so they're, they're taking their seats right now. Uh, so I assume Trump is about to come out. Let me go ahead and get my second monitor up and running so that I don't miss anything. Sometimes when you see me doing this stuff, uh, and I and you see the feed switch is because I've learned my lesson at this point to make sure I have a backup feed uh, in case one goes out and or one sounds like crap or the other one doesn't have the right camera angle. Uh, da -da -da. <laughs> the consistency and taste of Gators is like conch. Yeah, yeah, I, I, it, it's pretty good, pretty good stuff. Um, gators don't discriminate. Nope, not a discriminating. Bone in their body. And it's funny, you know, you know how the experts always say about sharks? Oh, you know, sharks don't like to eat people because they don't like the way people taste. Gator don't care. <laughs> Gator don't care. Whew. They will eat you. Yeah, I always thought that would be the best deterrent. And I, and I think they put some of that stuff. Uh, actually, um... Um over in some of those canals and rivers over there in Mexico. I heard uh, on Truth Social, FEMA is blocking roads and waterways in Florida. I don't think that's true. Here's why I don't think it's true. FEMA, if they even do anything, is usually after a disaster hits. They don't have any law enforcement authority. And down here, I'm pretty sure DeSantis would go tell these people, go pound sand. I know he's called out the National Guard. I know the sheriffs are, are out there on duty. And I know, you know, that one sheriff over there on the West Coast, he's already told people, if they loot, shoot. Just so you know, if y'all over there, anyone listening here deciding, hey, this might, you know, everyone's evacuating. There are going to be a bunch of empty homes over there. Hmm, that's going to be some easy pickings. Let me just jump on in that. Okay. If you loot, shoot. The man is well known for telling people, do what you got to do. Protect your protect your house. Um, so, as of down here, I don't think uh, uh, FEMA is, is doing that. Yeah, as of 5 p.m., FEMA is not blocking traffic. They, there's, good luck. <laughs> good luck you get run over. Um, Highway 301 in Florida is an interesting drive. If you ever been to um, Gainesville, where the Florida Gators play, well, back in the day when my wife was an EMT and she had to transport you know patients up to a hospital or from a hospital in Gainesville, and she would say they were just like all over the place, just on the side of the road hanging out. There's a beach in outside of Myrtle Beach called Huntington Beach. And Huntington Beach, you're driving into the beach, and they're all just hanging out. What's up? Keep that dog in the car. And I'm like, there's people walking around. I'm like, do you, do you see these lizards? These are big, big lizards. They're ready to eat you. Um, FEMA and FDI are, are always after the fact. Yeah, after the fact. Right now, he's got the state of emergency in place. Um, Everything's going to run smoothly. If you live in Florida, we will never run out of meat to eat because of the abundance of gators. <sighs> How can I address this without sounding callous? If you have a weapon and you have access to a, a boat, um, if you know what you're doing, you're going to eat in Florida. There are wild boars. Poo poo roast them. There is an abundance of fish everywhere. I mean everywhere. And like the gentleman said here, Lion's Prince, there's also gators that are, you know, they'll, they they hunt back. Even though a boar will hunt back too. Don't think he, he, he you know, the boar is just going to go, oops, sorry, I'm going to die now. Nope, that ain't going to happen. He's going to fight back. He's going to charge you. That's why I don't go hunting because I don't want something hunting me. And there's bears. There's bears out there and, and all kinds of other stuff that you can eat. So if you can hunt, you'll eat. If you can fish, you can eat. 
If you can trap gators, you can eat. And if you can do all those things, you're going to help feed other people. See, what happened up in North Carolina is a lot of that wildlife just got killed. I'm sure there's deer up there. I've seen them. There's deer here. I'm sure these mountain men up there would love to start, you know, hey, we're going to eat. Let's go out and hunt something. But if they can't find anything, if everything's already dead, and then I don't know what the water quality is out there to, you know, to, to fish, but it's, it's sad. Uh, my, my neighbor has a 400 pound pet hog. They have a 400 pound pet hog right now. <laughs> Can you imagine? You had a 400 pound pet hog and all the power and water and nothing's around those stores. And you start looking at Porky like, <sighs> and my wife's like, no, don't shoot Porky. Kids, go in the bedroom. <laughs> oh, my God. See, Clara here is, t is telling you the real story. We have bears, squirrels, deer, rabbits, and all kind of food if needed. You just have to be, again, what's that word? Prepared. <laughs> um, I saw a video where they were saying that all the black bears disappeared. Yeah. I mean, uh. Raging waters like that. I mean, they, they, there was a video of one horse that was like on the roof of a, of a stables. And don't know what happened to the other ones. Um, there's also bear in the mountains. Yeah, but I don't know if they survived. I, I just don't know. Uh, uh, call the neighbors over, honey. <laughs> DeSantis is a great man. Uh, it, <laughs> and I, I, I don't mean to make fun of the dude's pig, but you, you know what I'm saying. If, you, if, you, if you're going to look around... And there ain't no food. Hmm. Okay. Um, bacon for everyone. Oh, man. I'm telling you, Robin took me over to Hawaii to meet meet her friends and family over there. And they cooked a pig in the ground. And I ain't never had a pig like that. Oh, my God. It was good. What they, Robin, if you're on, what's it called? Lua, Kalua Lua pig or something like that? And, they, and they, they put it in the ground like a six-foot pit, and they put all kinds of leaves and stuff over it, and they cook it overnight slow. What's it? Ashley, you lived in, in Maui. What, what's it called? Kalua, Kalua Lua pig or something like that. It was, it, it was incredible. Incredible. I mean, the meat was just fall off the bone stuff. Yeah. I don't know Democrats suck. Pythons. I've been to Alligator Alley. Yeah. Um, you didn't know Florida had bears. Ooh, yeah. You, they got bears here. Definitely got bears. All right, so the room is filling up, and we're waiting for them to begin talking. Thanks, we've been talking about some stuff. Um, I've eaten gator. Yummy. Um, <laughs> us MAGA people do what we need to do to help each other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Does 15 cases of ramen help? Maybe not for your cholesterol with all that salt and sodium in it, but... It's 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 substantial enough where you can eat it. <laughs> no eating fluffy. Okay, Ashley just yeah, it's called Kalua pork. It's simply amazing. I mean just it, it's just not a whole lot of spices on it, not a whole lot of sauces unless you put on it yourself and it just it just falls in your out of your mouth type stuff. Oh it's it's fantastic. Loved it. Um let's see. And, and we call it uh, in at Louisiana. Cochon de lait. Okay, what's that? What's that mean? <laughs> oh, that's how we cook cook uh, cows for weddings. Yeah, uh, a spoonful of honey can stain you for for a day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd rather eat tree barks than iguanas, like a lot of people do. Yeah, they'll eat an iguana. Well, think about it. An iguana, although it's ugly, it's eating mostly leaves and little bugs and animals and stuff. Lots of protein. I mean, I would hate to, I, I'm not one for skinning anything or gutting anything. I don't even like doing anything with the fish. Robin handles all that. She catch a fish, uh, I watch her how she cleans it. I'm like, ugh, that's, that's gross, man. That's, but tastes good, tastes good. Uh, an empty belly is one hell of a motor. <laughs> now multiply that times four or five people in the family all looking at that family pig. <laughs> he ain't gonna make it. <laughs> I'm just gonna tell you. He ain't gonna make it. Uh, uh, chickens eat bugs. Mice. I didn't know chickens ate, ate, were carnivores. 
Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. I did not know that. See, I just learned something. Um, hey, Barry, thank you for your information. What's, what are some of the better cities in North Florida? And I'm looking also in the area of West Palm Beach, Del Rey. Del Rey is beautiful. I don't like West Palm. I, I, uh, sorry, I don't like West Palm. It's, it's, it's too hoodie for me. Del Rey, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful in Delray. North Florida, I don't have as much time up there. I mean, it's a whole different lifestyle. It, just to let you know, South Florida and North Florida are like two different states. Literally, like two different states. We have a lot of New Yorkers here. I always thought that the Florida Marlins, the baseball team, the Major League Baseball did the biggest, stupidest blunder ever. When they brought the Florida Marlins in and said, here's your team, Florida, you should have made them in the American League East. They should have been playing Boston and Baltimore and New York because if you had put them in that, they'd sell out every, every, seat, every game because everybody down here is from up there, including myself being from Connecticut. There are very, very, very few native South Floridians. And that's why it's been a hard thing to, you know, to turn for the vote because you know North Florida is red. South Florida, you don't know. It might be red, might be purple. And you know, for Trump now, the Cubans down in South Florida, they love him. By the way, tomorrow he's got an early um, Latino, Hispanic summit at 1030, which I'll be covering. So... Uh, that's going to be down here in Miami at this same venue, I believe, at his Doral Country Club in Miami. So uh, 1030 tomorrow, we'll be hitting that um, when he goes live, which is going to be very interesting because Latinos are really, really fleeing from Kamala Harris. I mean, I think he's up to like 40, 45 percent, which mathematically, as, as with the black audience, she can't overcome. You can't overcome this stuff. Um, but in any event, uh, you know, North Florida, I, I just don't know it as well. Jacksonville's up there on the east side. Uh, we lived in Daytona a while ago. Daytona is nice, very country, very country. And we have a man making his way to the stage. So this is, looks like one of the rabbis who's going to bring Trump on. So let's go ahead and cut to him. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, an event that none of us wanted to attend, an event that none of us thought living in America would ever occur. As we start, I would like to call upon Rabbi Harlig, Chaplain, Miami-Dade Police Department, to recite a psalm. And I would uh, like to call Tehila Schwab, Miami-Dade College student, who will translate the psalm that will be read. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. From the words of a fallen soldier, Eitan Oster, the true soldier fights not because he hates what's in front of him, but because he loves what's behind him. They said they love the people they defend, and they love, in our country, in America, having amazing leaders that are standing firm with Israel. And they love what is behind them as God watching over them and protecting them and our prayers. And let us pray. Psalm 130. <speaking in Hebrew> 
כביסי עדינוי כבסה נפשי ולדברי אכלתי. נפשי לעדינוי משוימנים לבוקר, שוימנים לבוקר. יחל יסול אל עדינוי כי אם עדינוי החסד והרבה אימו יפדוס, והוא יפדס ישראל מכל לבין עשיו. A song of ascents. Out of the depths I have called to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, Lord, should mark inquities, O Lord, who could stand? But there's forgiveness with you, that you may be feared. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning. Watch for the morning. Let Israel hope in the Lord. For with the Lord, there is loving kindness, and with him is bountiful redemption, and he shall redeem Israel from all his inquities. You may be seated. If for one moment you can glance around the room, you will see the faces of those who were taken from us on October 7th and October 7th only. In Judaism, the candle is the flicker of the soul. Part of tonight's memorial service will be to invite distinguished members of Miami-Dade community, leading rabbis and dignitaries, pastors, to light candles to commemorate the souls of those who are no longer with us. Some of those people who will be lighting the candles will deliver some remarks. The first speaker at tonight's event represents Israel with tremendous dignity and with tremendous courage to stand and face the adversaries that condemn Israel. I'd like to call upon Israel's Consul General, Mayor Starinsky, to light the first candle and deliver some remarks. Distinguished guests, community leaders, leaders, friends. Never did we think we would relieve the atrocities of our ancestors endured for centuries. Persecutions, incitement, pogroms, and mass murders. Yet we did. One year ago, on a day that will forever be etched in Jewish and human history, we stood in shock as more than 1,200 of our innocent brothers and sisters, literally our brothers and sisters, were murdered, raped, mutilated, murdered, burnt, maimed, whole families, babies, kids, elderly, Holocaust survivors, just like years back in an unprovoked and brutal terror attack. Evil pierced the heart of our community, our nation, and the Jewish people worldwide. We've been swept by emotions, agony, fear, rage, even despair, and this unbearable pain that never and will never subside. Today, we honor those lives, their dreams, and legacies. Today, we also pay tribute to the survivors who represent resilience and Zionism by, re by rebuilding our beloved homeland, and to the heroes who sacrificed their lives to ensure such a day is never but never repeated. 
Never did we think we would face the deep and, faithful, uh, and painful persistence of anti-Semitism and devil standards from the media, social platforms, universities, governments, and international institutions. Yet we do. The massacre of October 7th reminded us of the dangers and outcomes of anti-Semitism, a hatred that has haunted our people for generations. This, hate, this hatred decays our society and eliminate it is only possible if you fight it together. Additionally, Israel and Jews worldwide battle diplomatically and politically on the world stage against morally decayed and weaponized international institutions and countries that blame and try to punish us for a war waged on us. We defend our nation's right to protect itself while combating misinformation and distorted narratives on social media and on campuses, which have become breeding ground for ignorance, arrogance, and lies. Never did we think that the only Jewish state in the world 76 years after its establishment would still have to fight for its own mere existence, yet it does. It's 2024. The Israeli Defense Forces are confronting multiple fronts, even today. Simultaneously, Hamas in Gaza, Hezbollah in Lebanon, the Houthis in Yemen, the Shia militias in, in, in Iraq, terrorists that are emanating from, from Jordan and Samaria, and of course, the head of the snake, the orchestrator and financer, financer of these proxies, Iran, that fires hundreds of missiles directly at Israel. Never did we think that our brothers and sisters would be kidnapped from their beds, homes, music festivals, only to face torture, imprisonment, and murder. Yet they have 100 and hostages, look at their faces. 101 hostages remain in Gaza, suffering torture that we can only imagine, but why not to? To then, every day, we commit ourselves to the safe return of every living hostage and the closure of a proper burial for the families, for those who have been murdered by Hamas. We will never rest until each and every one of the 101 is back in Israel. Bring them home now. Bring them home now. And though history, though history sometimes echoes in our, in our ears, I am still hopeful and full of belief that the future holds good things for us. For two main reasons, we have the state of Israel and we have you. We have the support of the United States of America and the American people. In this moment, I want to express deep gratitude to the state of Florida, the Jewish and Israeli communities in Florida, to the United States of America and the American people for their unwavering support of Israel during this war. Your solidarity has been a beacon of hope, strengthening us in our most difficult hour. Israel will pursue anyone who, seek, anyone who seeks to harm it. Our might and courage go beyond our military power and transcends beyond F-35s and beepers. They lie in our values and spirit, and we will win not just because we have the means, but mainly because we have the values and light always, always defeats darkness. This past year, we have endured profound loss, but also experienced the overwhelming power of solidarity and brotherhood. Our communities have rallied together in unimaginable ways, stood shoulder to shoulder with us, extending hands of support to each other and to Israel. Let this day symbolize our unbreakable resilience and unity. Your efforts have been invaluable. And though we stand here today in mourning, we also stand in defiance of the hatred that seeks to destroy what we hold dear. Let us be proud of this pain and agony as we are defined by our appreciation of life, respect of faith, inclusivity, tolerance, and dedication to liberty, freedom,